Hi, this is Tessa Keogh, and if it's Tuesday, it's time for another Tuesday's tip in the Legacy Virtual Users Group community. We've had another increase in members, and that's great. Um, one thing I'd like to point out, though, is be sure to read the About section and read the guidelines over there in the Topics area so that you'll kind of get a lay of the land, know how things work here. And then the other thing I'd really love for you to do is to come up with an avatar so that could be your own photo and that can be done with a webcam or a photo that you already have that you like. It could also be a letter of the alphabet or perhaps an item. Some of our members use um, the items that they uh, enjoy such as gardening or uh, boating or RVing or anything like that. So whatever it is, go ahead and be individual and put together an avatar. That's so much easier than a blue head as we refer to them because we're not 100% sure when we converse with you, especially if your name is one of the more common, and I mean that in a good way. Um, but for instance, if I had a name like Barbara Bush, that comes up a number of times in a number of different women of different ages. So we want to make sure that we have the right people when we're uh, corresponding with them or when we see them here in the Legacy Virtual Users Group. Now you're taking a look at my Legacy family view and this is the Murphy Kiley family yet again. Something that was really interesting, a number of people asked during the last webinar that I did with the Legacy Go to Webinar series. They asked about my font or the colors that I used. And what I noticed was that there are a number of people who haven't gone in and really customized Legacy. And there's no need to do that because Legacy does provide uh, a great deal of choices or themes that you can use that are what I would call off the shelf. However, if you like to tinker as I do, or if you like to look at particular fonts or particular colors, again as I do, you can make any of these changes. Now you can make the changes and then just leave them and that's what I have done in the past. However, someone mentioned that when they most recently updated Legacy, they lost all of their user settings and having gone to all that trouble of changing your font or changing the colors, perhaps changing the colors on the tabs that you use, you know, any of those things, none of us would like to lose all of that work. Now, it was discussed and explained how you can go ahead and save those, but I always find that sometimes it's easier to see someone else do it uh, and to know that you uh, haven't broken legacy. So first of all, I'm going to show you the legacy home view had to get my mouse over there. So if you're in the Legacy Home View, you get the Legacy News, you get your to-do items if you've listed anything, any birthdays, death dates, or anniversaries that you've asked to have in Legacy Home. You also get your statistics and this updates bar. And this tells me that I have the latest uh, build. And if I click on updates, I can also find out what the changes were that were made in this installed version. And in version 501, I think there were only one or two changes. Really the major uh, revision or update was in late May, a number of corrections, a couple of additions. I would say that it's really a good idea before you automatically allow any program to update to take a look and see what it's going to be doing and then make a decision on if you want to update right at that moment, if you want to wait a week or two and see how things shake out, um, but to definitely take a look and see what you want. The other really helpful item is the support section and each of these items is a live link. As you can see I've selected that green color uh, but whatever color you use that's a live link so that you could look at the help file, tips from the experts, anything else that you're interested in taking a look at. What we're going to do is go to the family view we're back to uh, James Murphy and Ellen Kiley and we're going to go to options we're going to click on Customize, 
And we have a lot of choices here. And what you'll notice is that I've already gone to the choice that I'm interested in so that we could get set. And that choice um, allows you to set the colors for your user interface. And for me, that would be this kind of putty color, the colors that I've selected as my tab colors, uh, the colors that I've selected for males and females, uh, my font, any of that information. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to 9.4 and you can say save and load customized color schemes. And if you'll recall from another uh, tutorial we had, GBL is global and the other one, I don't even know if it's here because I think these are all uh, global. Let's take a quick look at view. Sure, FF is family file. So you can make changes to your view settings and in this instance this would be your family file. So you could set each family file to be a little different if you wanted to. However, when you go to a file or a um, anything that you want to customize and it says GBL or global that's going to make the changes to all of your files and what you're going to do is click on save and then it's going to ask you for future use and that could be something that you just use in the future on one particular file so you could make that a theme that you use on um, maybe your own personal family files as opposed to client work you might do or a research project that you do for someone else. You can also make that choice as a user default and that says I don't even have to think about this in the future. This is the customized color schemes that I'm going to be using as my user defaults. And if I do that every time I open a new file guess what? These colors and these fonts are going to show up. So let's give that a try. Now personally I'd like it if it said you've done this, you've been successful, <laughs> but it didn't. Now if I had saved this as for future use, let's see what happens. Now I'm given a choice and as you can see this is in the legacy family tree it's in app data and color schemes and you want to understand where things go in your legacy family tree um, and that's just for future reference uh, but it's it's just something you want to be aware of I wouldn't uh, play around with it too much. Now th this is the default and then you have the I would say themes or color schemes that Legacy already came up with. And there might be some that were chosen um, that you chose yourself. And so if I were to do this, I would call this neutral. And hopefully I spelled that right. Um, and I would probably go back and and say TAK neutral because those are my initials so I know that that's something I've done myself so let's see if that works alright so I have saved that and if I wanted to load it at any time if I'd gone back to defaults or anything else I could always load that color scheme and it would give me the putty color uh, the plum color and all of the colors that I've selected so Let's take a look while we're here. I didn't know anything about this. And we have our fonts here. And I'm wondering if it gives us that same section. I don't see that. So that's something that I'm going to ask in the next Legacy webinar or send a little note into someone who works at Legacy because they might be able to tell us. I am hoping that the fonts are part of that whole uh, color scheme or uh, user, user choices, but we'll see. And in any event, when you do anything in Legacy, when you've come to customize Legacy, you're going to want to save it. And if you have any questions about about something that you're doing and I'll just show you this really quickly. I'm in fonts and it was over there in a different window so I'll bring it over and what it tells me is on customizing fonts how I go about doing that and you can see that I was already there and we have two choices your screen fonts and your report fonts and if I had been paying attention you can save your settings for future default values and that's right in there in customized colors. So although it doesn't tell you, and a truly logical person would say, I'm just saving my colors, not my colors and my fonts, when we go into help, we find out that we're saving both. 
and that works for me. So if you ever have a question about anything that you're doing in Legacy, do be sure to click on that help item and you'll be able to specifically address the question that you had in fonts. It's not going to go into all of them, it's going to go specifically to fonts. And then we're going to just save the changes we made today. Done. And now hopefully anytime I go around and set up a new file or do anything else, this is what I'll be looking at. Now I would encourage you to play around and the reason I encourage people to play around is a lot of us are looking at our legacy screen for an extended period of time. So make sure that you like what you're looking at. That's something that's really important to me. I'm impressed with substance but I'm also impressed with form. That's why we like to read certain blocks better than others. That's why a newsletter might really appeal to us but another one might be too busy. Really take a little time play around, pick something that you like, and always know that you can restore to the default. You can select the legacy default or go back to any of those other color schemes just by clicking on them and using them. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you play around a little bit. I hope that many of our new members or members who haven't taken the time yet come up with an avatar so that I either see what you look like, either as a child or as an adult, or I see something that's your interest, whether that's gardening, travel, uh, perhaps calligraphy or quilting. Share a little bit of yourself with your avatar and we'll know a little bit more about you. And we'll see you back here next week for another Tuesday's Tip.